Hi guys, so um, I've got a little source to read you here that covers a couple of interesting uh, points which have come up in previous discussions uh, under my videos. Um, uh, the first one is this discussion of uh, basket hilts on swords. So I'll just grab one here. Um, this is a what we call a basket hilted, in this case, back sword because it's single edge, uh, blunt back edge, sharp front edge. Uh, and uh, this is an early English style, but the uh, basket hilted broadsword, uh, the broadsword being two edged, survived through to the 19th century and indeed to the 20th century, um, carried by Highland officers in the British Army and uh, sergeants as well, in fact. Um, and uh, the basket hilt is fantastic because it protects the hand, it encloses the hand. Now the disadvantage is that it's slightly constricting, it limits some of the ways you can move the sword. I don't personally like basket hilts very much, I like to hold uh, a sword pretty much like a sabre is held and you need a slightly more open hilt to do that. So if you want to hold it like a sabre, don't get a basket hilt basically, or get a modified one so that you can hold it like that. Uh, but <coughs> They don't always protect your hand, as we'll find out in a minute. Okay, so um, here's, the, here's the source. It's written by S uh, Surgeon General William Munro, uh, who was formerly Surgeon to the 93rd Highlanders, uh, regarding the, the storming of the uh, Bigham Cothi um, during the uh, uh, Indian Mutiny. So he says, whilst Lieutenant Grimston, with a party of his company, was pursuing some sepoys amongst the passages and outbuildings, one of them, concealed behind a pillar, made a downward cut at Grimston's head, which he, Grimston, warded off, and with a back step, uh, back sweep of his claymore, claymore being a basket-hilted broadsword, cut deep into the enemy's neck and killed him. Fantastic. Good there. He parried and he riposted and he won. Okay? Good stuff. However, the sepoy's sharp tulwar um, had uh, cut clean through the basket hilt uh, of his claymore, um, and the leather lining uh, as well inside the inside the hilt into Grimston's hand. Well, that's not a very nice thing. I mean, it, 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 that's very interesting on many levels. First of all, he defended himself and riposted and killed the guy. That's impressive. Uh, one blow, one defence, one riposte, end of fight. That's how realistic fights, uh, in certainly in war, generally went. Okay, it was, there was a very few exchanges of blow, and it, you know when we're talking about things like edge parrying. Well, yeah, he parried with his edge because that's what they were taught to do in the 19th century um, and most other centuries. Um, he parried with his edge once and killed the guy. Okay, so he defended his life, got a nick in his edge, and killed the opponent. So he survived and felt the opponent. Does it matter? Do you think he cared that he had a nick in his edge? No. Okay, he did not care. Uh, so, great. Uh, he managed to kill a guy with one blow. That's also an interesting point. However, obviously the reason I picked this out is because it's also interesting that he defended the blow, but he also, also some of the blade landed on the hilt rather than on the blade. Probably landed diagonally from my, I would say, from my fencing experience. It can perhaps land fully on the hilt, but anyway, it cut through some bars of the hilt and into his hand. Uh, that's interesting because it shows us that a basket hilt doesn't always protect uh, as well as you hope it might do. So if you're training with basket hilts or indeed with sabre hilts or cutlass hilts, when we're practicing with blunts and you take a hit on the hilt, it's classed as a parry, that's fine, you hit on the hilt, you hit the guy back, you win. Okay, But try and avoid being hit on the hilt because whilst hilts are there to defend your hand, they're not impervious to damage, uh, uh, even if it didn't get cut through, it could get dented into your hand. And you don't really want that happening, okay? So try and avoid getting hit on the hilt. Um, so, uh, but also the other interesting thing it tells us is that a person got cut in the hand, but he was still able to function, okay? So he was cut in the hand with a toolbar, he still killed the guy, um, and he still then carried on in, in service and wasn't disabled, okay? <coughs> so, um, the next bit that's interesting is, it goes on, the adjutant, McBean, um, on entering the main breach, was set upon by a number of the enemy, but being a powerful man and armed with a heavy sword, he killed 11, 11 of them, one after the other. Uh, on, on the only occasion that McBean ever spoke on the subject to me, he remarked, I was there to kill, do you see, man, and I did my best in that way. Okay, so there we have a guy who was, uh, I believe that the enemies, if I recall, because there are other descriptions of this uh, episode from other writers who witnessed it. 
Um, I believe that the people who attacked him were mostly gunners, okay? So if they were gunners, they probably had ramrods, maybe a, a musket used with a club, maybe a, maybe a tool wire or two, but they weren't necessarily frontline, hardcore, you know, hand-to-hand -hand, uh, troops, and they probably didn't have bayonets. But anyway, he was set upon by 11 men, and with only a sword, a, an officer's uh, Highland broadsword, a claymore, he killed 11 of them, okay? And I, I know a number of you have asked me about the plausibility, because obviously we watch movies and stuff where one hero like Aragorn or King Arthur or whoever kills like 90 of the enemy during the course of the film. But people have asked me, is it possible for one person to kill multiple enemies? Well, there you go, there's a historical example. And this particular example of McBean in the breach uh, during that siege uh, is recounted by at least sort of at least two or three or four um, other, I, other on the additional to this, eyewitnesses and people who were there, people from his regiment and other people who were involved in the siege. So it was, it definitely happened. The number of enemies actually varies slightly. I believe it varies between 9 and 11. I think 11 is the most, but it, it's always more than 5. You know, it's always a number of the enemy, and he always killed them all uh, with his sword. Okay? Um, so there you go. Yes, it did happen sometimes. So you get one hardcore individual at the right moment um, uh, with the right enemy. Uh, so it can happen. Okay, I hope that's interesting. Cheers.